Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose a and b are non-zero real numbers. Then the reciprocal of a times b is equal to the reciprocal of a times the reciprocal of b. Now, before we get into the proof, let's get some context. The book that I'm basing this proof off of is Intro to Real Analysis by Bartle and Sherbert. And this is just one of the exercises in the book. And the way that the real numbers are described in this book are by its field properties. And one of those properties is the following. For all non-zero real numbers x, there exists a unique real number which we denote by 1 over x, which has the property that x times 1 over x is equal to 1. So really, 1 over x is the only real number such that if we perform x times 1 over x, we get 1. Right? And we call 1 over x the reciprocal of x. Another property of the field numbers we're going to use is for every real number x, 1 times x is equal to x. And in addition, multiplication is both commutative and associative. And here's a result that can be deduced from the field properties of the real numbers. For all real numbers a and b, if a times b is equal to 0, then a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. Notice that the contrapositive of this statement says if a is not equal to 0 and b is not equal to 0, then a times b is not equal to 0. Now, in the book, this fact is referred to as theorem 2.1.3b. Okay, so now let's get to proving this theorem. Let's start out the proof. Let's give ourselves two non-zero real numbers, a and b. And our whole goal from here is to show that the reciprocal of a times b is equal to the reciprocal of a times the reciprocal of b. Now, first of all, does this assertion make sense? Well, since a is non-zero, we know that the reciprocal of a is defined. Similarly, since b is non-zero, the reciprocal of b is defined. So these two guys both make sense. But does the reciprocal of a times b make sense? Well, since a and b are non-zero, we know by theorem 2.1.3b, we must have that a times b is non-zero. And therefore, the reciprocal of a times b makes sense. So all three of these guys are defined real numbers. So this assertion makes sense. So now, let's prove this. Now, first of all, I would really like to emphasize what the reciprocal of a times b is. We know by theorem 2.1.3b, a times b is non-zero. And then if we go back to our first field property that we have written here, well, we know that this statement works for every non-zero real number. So in particular, it must work for the non-zero real number a times b. So taking x to be a times b, we had that there is a unique real number, which we denote by 1 over a times b, which has the property that a times b times 1 over a times b is equal to 1. In other words, 1 over a times b is the only real number such that if you multiply it by a times b, you get 1. Well, we're going to show that if we take 1 over a times 1 over b and multiply that by a times b, we also get 1. Since 1 over a times b is the only real number that does that, that will tell us that these two guys must be equal. So let's multiply this guy by a times b. And we want to show that this results in 1. Well, to start, let's apply the commutative property and swap the a and b here. 
And then let's apply the associative property. We'll move this parentheses around a and one over a times one over b. And then let's apply the associative property to this parentheses and move it around a times one over a. And then we expect a times one over a to be equal to one, which we could show that by looking at our first field property. If we take x to be a, well then, 1 over a is the unique real number, which has the property that a times 1 over a is equal to 1. So yeah, a times 1 over a is equal to 1. And next, we expect 1 times 1 over b to be equal to 1 over b, which we could verify that by looking at our second field property. Right? We take x to be 1 over b, well then 1 times 1 over b is equal to 1 over b. And then at this point, we expect b times 1 over b to be equal to 1. Looking at our first field property, if we take x to be b, we have that 1 over b is the unique real number, which has the property that b times 1 over b is equal to 1. And that's it. So we have shown if we take 1 over a times 1 over b and multiply that by a times b, we get 1. Well, 1 over a times b is the only real number such that if we multiply it by a times b, we get 1. So that tells us that these two guys must be equal. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.